Over 2,000 years after the destruction of their homeland, the kingdoms founded by the surviving Dúnedain of Númenor were severely weakened and surrounded by enemies. Winning a few decades of peace between wars, King Ondaher of Gondor married his daughter Fidiel to Prince Arvedwi, son of the King of Arthedain in Arnor, hoping their renewed bond of friendship might increase their defensive capabilities. Yet this alliance ultimately did little good, as the Dark Lord Sauron plotted in the shadows to undermine their efforts and destroy both kingdoms. Still weak from his defeat at the end of the Second Age, Sauron recovered his strength in Dol Guldur while his servants carried out his will, with some moving east to visit the Wayne Riders, who failed in their most recent attempt to invade Gondor. Encouraging them to build up their forces once more, the Wayne Riders traveled south of Mordor to befriend the Men of Khand and Nir Harad, other enemies of Gondor with their own scores to settle. Coordinating their efforts, the Easterling and Southron Alliance attacked the Kingdom of Gondor from both the north and south in 1944 TA. Fortunately, the Lord of the Aotheod, an ally to Gondor, spotted the enemy approaching and sent a warning to King Ondaher, who around the same time also heard about an invasion in the south, and so prepared to face the enemy on two fronts. Splitting up his forces, General Eärniel, a relative of the king, led a smaller army south, while Ondaher and his eldest son Artemir took the larger host north. Wishing to secure the succession in case they did not return, the king ordered his youngest son Faramir to stay behind as regent, while the rest marched to the Battle of Morannon, where Ondaher led the center, his nephew Minotaur commanded the right wing, and the noble prince Ardrahil was charged with the left. Yet the men of Gondor were not expecting the Wayne Riders to be so eager for vengeance, riding their chariots and horses with all haste to unexpectedly descend upon the king's army, cutting them down in a savage attack. Destroying their center ranks, both King Ondaher and his son Artemir were killed, leaving Minotaur of the right flank in command of their forces. Despite being on the verge of defeat, the news somehow got worse when the Lord of the Aotheod informed the general that Prince Faramir, youngest son of the king and regent of Gondor, who was supposed to be safe in Minas Anor, was killed in the fighting. Unwilling to remain behind while his family went to war, Faramir disobeyed his father and wore a disguise to infiltrate the army, fighting with the Aotheod and dying during an attack in the Dead Marshes. Finding little time to mourn, the Wayne Riders soon fell upon and slayed General Minotaur, leaving the last of their forces under the command of Prince Ardrahil, though they too were eventually defeated, allowing the Easterlings to proudly declare victory and begin a raucous celebration. Losing the greater part of their forces in the north, Eärniel and his host faced difficult odds in the south as the men of Khand and Nir Harad swept in from the east to capture Umbar, thereby cutting off any possible support from their allies in that region. The enemy then moved north to attack Ithilien, where their advance was at last halted and forced into retreat by the army of Eärniel. Hearing about the loss of their king in the disaster of the Morannon, Eärniel wasted no time after their victory and immediately marched to face the Wayne Riders in the north, only to find them drunk, merry, and utterly distracted. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Eärniel charged against them in the Battle of the Camp, vanquishing the enemy and ending the immediate threat. Despite their alliance, no aid came from Arthedain during the invasion of Gondor, as the last realm of Arnor was busy trying to keep the forces of Angmar in the north from overrunning their defenses. Though the kingdom of Arnor was once a large and powerful realm, centuries of division and war left them a shell of their former selves, relying on military aid from the elves of Lindon and Rivendell to survive. Yet the monarch Arafant was not only the ruler of Arnor, but as a direct descendant of Isildur, was also high king of the Dúnedain and so had some sway over all their people. Therefore, when the question of succession arose in Gondor, following the death of the king and his sons, Arafant's heir, Arvidui, who was married to Fidiel, last surviving child of Ondaher, submitted himself as a candidate to rule and one day unify the kingdoms. But the people of Gondor rejected his offer as they recognized the weakness of Arnor and no longer considered them an equal power, instead choosing the war hero Eärniel as their new king. Ruling with wisdom and humility, Eärniel sent a letter to Arvidui upon his ascension, thanking Arnor for their friendship and promising to send aid when possible. As the soldiers of Arnor continued to struggle in holding back the Witch King of Angmar, events finally came to a breaking point in 1974 when the enemy army overran Arthedain's defenses and conquered the capital of Fornost. 
bringing whatever heirlooms he could. King Arvidui, who inherited the throne upon the death of his father, gathered his people and fled to create a defensive position in the North Downs. Yet once again, the armies of Angmar were upon them, and so the monarch led his people to take refuge in the Blue Mountains, while his son Aranarth, having been cut off from his father during the fall of Fornost, went west to seek assistance from the elf lord Círdan of Lindon, who immediately sent a ship to search for his ally. Running out of supplies, Arvidui had no choice but to leave the Blue Mountains and find the Losoth, also known as the Snowmen of Forokel, an ancient tribe of humans descended from the Forod Wythe of the First Age, who adapted to living in the cold. When the threat of Angmar arose in the Third Age, the Losoth migrated to the Cape of Forokel, where the enemy could not follow. Desperate for food and shelter, King Arvidui approached the primitive people and offered jewels of great value for their aid. But the Losoth had no interest in such things, and instead helped them out of pity and fear for their weapons. When the elves of Lindon at last arrived on a great ship to rescue the king, the Losoth were astounded as they knew nothing of sailing technology. Hoping to convince Arvidui to stay until the Witch King was defeated, the chieftain warned that boarding this sea monster would bring about calamity, but the ruler was determined to return south and continue the struggle. To thank the Losoth for their assistance, the king gifted them the Ring of Barahir, a priceless heirloom from the First Age, passed down through the noble houses of the Edain. Unfortunately, the Losoth were correct in their prediction, and the elves were struck by a terrible ice storm on the return journey, resulting in the destruction of their ship, the death of the king, and the loss of great Numenorean heirlooms like two of the Palantiri. Learning that his father was lost, Aranarth inherited the rule of Arnor only to realize his kingdom no longer existed. Therefore, he did not take the title of king and instead, as a descendant of Isildur through his father and Anarion through his mother, declared himself chieftain of the Dúnedain, gathering whatever soldiers of Arnor remained to create the Rangers of the North, a band of elite warriors dedicated to waging a long-term war against the Dark Armies throughout their former lands and beyond. The children and families of these rangers, along with the heirlooms they still possessed, went to Rivendell, where they lived under the protection of Lord Elrond, who shared kinship with the royal house of the Dúnedain. Hearing about Angmar's invasion, King Eadnil of Gondor started gathering a host under the command of his son Eadnur to march north and help his allies, but they arrived too late, finding Arnor destroyed and their king dead. Making contact with the elves of Lindon and rangers of Aranarth, Gondor formed a coalition army that even included a company of hobbit archers from the Shire and marched upon Angmar, hoping to claim vengeance for the loss of Arnor and finally end the northern threat. Meeting at the Battle of Fornost, the Witch King was confident in victory and initiated the attack only to be overwhelmed by the enemy and forced into retreat. Falling back to Angmar, the Witch King was further troubled when an army from Rivendell arrived, led by the powerful Glorfindel, to aid the Alliance. With his forces destroyed and his realms beset by enemies, the Witch King stepped forth to personally do battle with Eadnur of Gondor, but his look and presence was so terrifying, Eadnur's horse frightened and fled with the prince on his back. Laughing and mocking the flight of his adversary, the Witch King was soon silenced by Glorfindel, who charged and attacked with such fury, the ruler of Angmar also fled the battle, disappearing into the shadows. Though Eadnur wished to pursue, Glorfindel claimed it was useless, as his death lay elsewhere, saying, He will not return to this land, far off yet is his doom, and not by the hand of a man will he fall. Though he suffered a defeat and was unable to permanently establish the realm of Angmar, the Witch King succeeded in his primary mission of destroying Arnor, thereby leaving a weakened Gondor as the last kingdom of the Dúnedain. Now ready to focus his attention south, the Witch King journeyed to Mordor where he reunited with the other Nazgûl and formed a new army which they used to besiege Minas Ithil in 2000 TA. Within two years, they captured the city and its great treasures, including another of the Palantiri. Changing the city's name to Minas Morgul, it became home to the Witch King, while Gondor's capital of Minas Anor was renamed Minas Tirith, meaning Tower of the Guard. After the death of Eadnil in 2043, his son Eadnur inherited the throne, and while he was known as a warrior of great renown, this also meant he felt deeply embarrassed that his horse made him flee from combat against the Witch King. Taking advantage of his warrior's pride, the Nazgul leader sent out a message following his capture of Minas Morgul, challenging Eadnur to single combat. 
Realizing this was a terrible idea, the steward of Gondor convinced the king to refuse. But when the Witch King issued the challenge again seven years later, Eärnud could not be restrained, riding with a small party of companions into Minas Morgul, never to be seen again. Before his departure, he visited the Hallows, where nobility were buried, and left the crown of Gondor upon the lap of a statue of his father, where it remained for a thousand years, as no new king was chosen, with power instead given to Mardil Varonwe of the House of Húrin, who was named Ruling Steward, meaning he and his descendants were to lead Gondor until the return of the king. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Jack the Lionheart, Hormis Woods Whisper, Kyle Blitzsword, Lady J Book Nerd, and Honir the Dead Raven. If you'd like to help the channel, go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can sign up and gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series Heroes of Lore and Legends.